Zero. Darkness cannot move. Now think about it. We are the children of light. We are supposed to be on the move, you know, get something done for God. Right? People say, well, it's getting dark. The world's so bad. Well, then turn on your light. Duh. It's, the reason it's dark is because of you. Right? You're the light to turn it on. Right? The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hey, gates don't attack you. You attack them. Yeah, let's go, man. Do something for God. Anyway, verse 24. By what way is the light parted which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Now, wait, wait, wait. Is God telling Job that the light causes the wind? He sure is. And you can ask any weatherman, that's exactly correct. The sunlight causes the wind patterns. The ground heats up, expands the air. We have wind on earth because of the light. Just like God said 4,000 years ago. God said, canst thou send lightnings? Boy, it's a good thing I can't. How many of you can think of somebody that's lucky to be alive because you cannot send the lightnings? I can think of several. Yes, I can. God said, Canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are. Now, wait, wait, wait. Is God telling Job that electricity can be used to send a message? Like radio, cell phone, microwave, TV? Electricity sends a message two different ways, through the electricity, through the wire, and also through the electromagnetic force, the radio waves coming off of it. God told Job that 4,000 years ago. Marconi and them guys just discovered it in the last few hundred years. God asked Job 84 questions. Job never answered one. These are the kind of questions that don't need an answer. The question was designed <coughs> to change the person's attitude. These are the same kind of questions you dads have to ask your kids. See, I've got three kids, one of each. I know what I'm talking about. Kids get to a certain age, and they get kind of cocky, and they think, you know, they should make the rules around the house. The kid comes in one day and says, hey, Dad, listen. I believe I should be allowed to stay out till 4 in the morning with my friends. After all, I'm 10 now. <laughs> and Dad says, hold on just a minute, kid. You'd like to know why you can't stay out till 4 in the morning. Well, son, let me ask you a couple questions. Uh, who pays the electric bill around this house? Huh? Who's paying for the house? Who paid for them clothes you're wearing, son? Who paid for that bed you slept on last night? Who pays for the food you eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat? Who paid for that hot water and soap you took a shower with about a month ago? <laughs> Let's just get it straight, son. The Bible is very clear. He who payeth the bills maketh the rules. Second Opinions, chapter 4. You see, son, me, dad, you, kid. And if you're going to sleep under my roof and eat my food, you're going to do it my way. And if you want to do it your way, well, then go get your own roof to sleep under and do it your way. See, that's the golden rule, son. He that hath the gold maketh the rules. Who do you think you are, kid? Where were you when we brought this property and cleared this land and drove off the grizzly bears and marched uphill to school 40 miles in the snow barefoot? Both ways. <laughs> How many got the same speech when you were growing up? You know, okay, good, good. Let's get it straight, son. Me, dad, you, kid. I think that's what God's doing to Job. God asked Job 84 questions. Job never answered one. But Job got an attitude adjustment. See, Job had the same problem that most of us have. He did not have a good appreciation for who God was. Come to chapter 40. God said, Behold now, behemoth. Well, what on earth is a behemoth? Well, whatever it was, Job could behold it. Because God never tells you to do something you can't do. See, God would not say, Behold now, behemoth, if he could not behold now, behemoth. That's deep theology, I know, okay, but think it through, all right? Now, some reference Bibles say behemoth is probably the elephant or hippopotamus. Oh, that is ludicrous. I believe behemoth is the long-necked dinosaur. Now, there are 13 different long-necked dinosaurs, okay? There's the Brachiosaur, the Apatosaur, the Cetosaur. He's got the big seat, okay? There's the Blondosaur. <laughs> you have to talk to her kind of slow, okay? Um, I, say, I think Behemoth is the Apat Brachiosaurus. It says he eats grasses and ox. Some people say, hey, my Bible says elephant and elephants eat grass. Well, duh, bunny rabbits eat grass too, okay? A lot of animals eat grass, right? Look at the next verse. His strength is in his loins, his force is in the navel of his belly. The biggest part on him is his belly. 
And they say, well, elephants have a big belly. Yes, I know. Hippopotamus have a big belly. Brachiosaurus had a big belly. He has a big belly. <laughs> so does he. <laughs> that is just sick, sick. Who would, who would pose for that? Anyway, it says, he moveth his tail like a cedar. Now, hold on a minute. His tail is like a cedar tree. Have you ever seen an elephant's tail? I mean, would that remind you of a cedar tree? Or a hippo tail? Not like a cedar tree. Now, Brachiosaurus tail, yeah, that's a little more like a cedar tree than the rest of them, okay? You know, before they put those footnotes at the bottom of the Bible, I think they should be required to read the passage at least once. And then comment on it, okay? By the way, you preachers, if you're going to preach on a passage, at least read it once before you preach on it, okay? Yeah, all right. Anyway, next verse says, His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He has big, heavy-duty bones. And they did. This is a real dinosaur toe bone I've got in my museum in Pensacola. One of the knuckle bones from a brachiosaurus. Now, this will be kind of complicated, so listen carefully. The reason he had such big toe bones is because he had big toes. How many can figure that out with no help? Four, five, six, okay. And the reason he had those big toes is because he had a big foot. Wow. There's a kid taking a bath in a brachiosaur footprint. Picture's on the book right here on the steps. And the reason he had that big foot is because he had a big leg to hold up. His front leg is 20 feet tall. The biggest dinosaur found so far is 60 feet to the top of the head. Found in Oklahoma. They say it's going to take them 20 years to dig all the bones out of the ground because it is a government project. They say when it was alive, it probably weighed 100 tons. Now, 100 tons is equal to 14 school buses put together. That means if he was to come by and step on you, you would be deeply impressed by him. <laughs> you would be road pizza. Mm -hmm. By the way, speaking of government projects, <clears throat> I've got to share with you my new invention that's going to make me the richest man on planet Earth. I'm going to save so much money for the highway department, construction crews, utility companies, and the military. Oh, and all I want is 10% of the savings, and I'll be the richest man on planet Earth. I have invented a shovel that will stand up by itself. <laughs> you won't need to pay those guys to lean on it anymore. Mm, I thank you. I know. <laughs> okay. Next verse says, he's the chief of the ways of God. He's the chief. That's the Hebrew word, resheth, which means he's the chief, he's the principal, he's the biggest animal God ever made. Well, that would not be the elephant or hippopotamus. It would be the brachiosaurus. And that kind of fits the pattern for the way the devil works, you know. Whenever God makes things, the devil tries to destroy them. God makes beautiful things, and Satan always tries to destroy them. Hey, question. How big is your God? I mean, do you ever think about that? When you stop and pray and you say, Heavenly Father, do you have any idea who you're talking to? I mean, have you ever stopped and just thought about that? Who are you about to talk to? I mean, you sit down for lunch, you know, and you're going to pray. Okay, bless the bunch as they crunch the lunch. Amen. <laughs> we expect God to come like a puppy dog when we call, don't we? Okay, God, I got time for you now. Pay attention. Now, here's my prayers. Give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this, and give me this, and give it quick. That's about what it boils down to, isn't it? I mean, have you ever stopped and really thought how, who you're talking to? How big is your God? Hey, is your God big enough to tell you what to do and you just simply do it without question? For instance, does God tell you what kind of clothes to wear? Now, First Timothy says the women should dress modestly. See, my daddy always said if you're not in business, don't advertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Does God tell you how to cut your hair? First Corinthians says it's a shame for man to have long hair. Oh, when I got saved, I was a lifeguard. Nice suntan, long blonde hair. I read that and said, oh, wow, I better go cut it. It's just a no question. It's a no-brainer. God, you're not happy? Yes, sir. It's absolutely.